Would you like to see the cutest thing I've ever seen? A little baby ram pump. I know I'm excited to get to the ram pump too, but first off, the old one, I haven't hooked it. My old, my big ram pump, I haven't had it running this year. It's all, weeds all grown up around it. I can't hardly get to it. So, Mrs. W, I'll tell you what, if there's one thing Mrs. W likes to do is weed whack. Man, she goes through this trimmer string like smoke and oakum. Um, for some reason, she has the uncanny ability to, to, uh, it goes back into the hole there and I have to end up rewinding it. But it looks like she's, there's not a whole lot left here, so I'll just, We'll just wrap some new stuff on here. So I keep I keep trying to get her to go with the blade. You know, I've got the I've got the uh, still factory blade here, but she likes to string. I don't know she, you know, I think I think I may it may be my own fault that I ruined her on that because you know years a few years back I put one of those. Uh, I, well, I adapted a. Uh, <laughs> a 10 inch table saw blade uh, to because we were working in the forest you know to cut down some uh, cut down the small trees and and I don't think she cared for that it was uh, it was probably a really bad idea it was exceedingly dangerous and should never be probably should have never been operated unless you were wearing a suit of armor but it was effective first cut with a 940 boy it came sharp it did come sharp. Oh man, it feels good. Good to, good to have my old friend back, isn't it? All right, let's finish this up here. Those Germans, they think of everything. They don't want us to have to string the wrong way. So Mrs. W, w she's going to head down there and start clearing out the area for a ram pump. And then uh, we've got the annual maintenance, you know, so so the dam kind of gets clogged up and the and the pipe gets full of pine cones and we have to take it apart, flush the line and and see how it survived the winter. I mean they're they're pretty resilient. I, I mean it's it's been so tough that I don't even take it out anymore. I just leave it down there and uh seems to be just fine. So I was saying in the video that you, you sure do like the weed whack. Who doesn't? I don't. I love it. You get this instant <laughs> instant job that's done, and it's not immediately undone. I, I have, <laughs> so you, you see it. It also doesn't like to run, and it scrapes up my legs when I run on the path without it. Well, I, I've noticed that anytime uh, uh, you can uh, get a little bit of free time from the remodel, you find you, I always see you out there chasing a lawnmower or a weed, wh weed whipper. Somebody recommended a book to me and said, like, what do you really like to do? And for some people, it's art or cooking or all that. I like to do trail maintenance, weed whack, trim trees. So do you want to, you want to start it? Or do you <laughs> I'm want me, a little unusual, huh? Do you want me to start it for you? Oh, cool. I'd love if you start it. Of course. I'm, who am I to look a gift horse in the mouth, right? <laughs> You have a love-hate with two-stroke engines. Start. How about turn it on, huh? So the tools I need to work on the ram pump are always the same. Two pair of big channel locks, a big pipe wrench, and a really big hammer. Go, Heart Racer, go. Go, Heart Racer. Look at that. Look, it's a string. Any type of a rope or string keeps the Heart Racer occupied for hours. So I gotta carry all this stuff here, so we'll take the tool truck down. Here to the ram pump. Oh boy, that was a big rock. We don't need our new ram pump yet. We gotta we're gonna go to town today and and get a couple fittings and some pipe. I use the, the weed whipper instead of the blade. 
and I needed a blade. Let me guess, the string went back inside. The string went back inside. So I need to use a string just on the grasses and on these kind of mixed things, use the blade. You know, that never happens to you. We can Sweetheart, if you ever weed whipped, it happen to you too. We can fix it. Well, I, okay, so I did offer you the, so bl the blade. I know, and I should have taken the blade. So this is, is this different than our last one? I no, don't want to break something. No, it's just the same. So just take a screwdriver. Yeah. Or you can even push your fingers in there if they're strong enough. Okay. It's made for both. Push your fingers in there okay. and there's a tab. And just take that loose and do it carefully. Flip it upside down. And then you should be able to capture those, those strings. Do you like my Wildland mop-up goggles? They're great. Thanks, love. You're welcome. I don't know what it is with women in machinery. So this is one of the four springs we have on the property. And this is a, boy, this is a real blessing. One of the key things that we wanted, uh, or we looked for in property, was to have lots of water. And we have uh, four nice springs that run, and three of them run year round, uh, hard, lots of water. So that's a blessing. So this area is kind of interesting in here. So I, I talked to, when I looked up here in the tree, I see there's, uh, maybe you can't see it or not, right up there is a, a isolator meaning that there was a wire ran in here. And I was told uh, by one of my old neighbors years ago that there was a little cabin here and a well with a hand pump. And when we were kind of clearing around here and trying to figure out what we had, uh, I found the old uh, pump head. You can see right there. That's what they, so they had, so right underneath my feet somewhere, I don't know exactly where, is a hand dug brick lined well because uh, there's lots of water. You can always tell water in our area anyway because there's all the cattails. So when you see cattails like that and over here, they're all over. This is a really wet area. Another indicator is if you see cedars. Cedars like to grow. They'll grow in water. Whenever you see cedars in the forest, you can be confident that there's water. They're probably growing right on top of it. So this is the collection point for the ram pump here. And I, just before I, before I had the camera, I came down here and I was just kind of clean this out a little bit but what I've done is I've taken the screen off of it I keep a piece of this is just screen door material that I saved and we want to we want to protect this inlet here because this is going to supply a ram pump we don't want any pine cones or debris and I know there's some stuff stuck in there we'll go down there here in a bit clean that all out flush the whole line but I I think it's pretty well cleaned out so what I do every spring is just take a zip tie this thing doesn't need to be so big I'll take the big old scissors here Cut this into a more manageable size. This is a two inch pipe. We don't need that big of a piece here. But uh, this will have to be cleared, cleaned out every, probably once a week or so. And this, that's, a, that's a real good job for an 11 year old boy named Jack. It's part of his chore list to come down and clean out the ram pump. So you, you may not be, you, uh, if you're new to the channel, you may not know what a ram pump is. And I uh, highly encourage you to stick, stick around here because if you haven't seen one or don't know what it is, uh, prepare to be amazed because I certainly was uh, when I first learned of it. All right, so make sure that that's on there good. And these big heavy zip ties are nice. They can be reused. I'll leave the tail on it. And there we have a very small screen uh, that won't allow anything to clog up our, our ram pump. This might be parts of our land that you haven't seen before. I don't think I've ever videoed in here. I'm gonna show you the standpipe and the reason behind it. So this is the standpipe and every year I'll come down here and take the riser off of it and I can feel in there that there's all sorts of sticks and things get clogged up here. So what we need, we'll take the ram pump loose and we'll, sometimes I can pull them out. There's one. Uh, flush it out uh, and all that stuff will pass through. 
So those of you guys who are plumbers are not going to need me to explain this to you. You should be explaining it to the rest of us. But what it's, what it's doing is it's, we basically move the water, the supply of water, down to this area. We're still maintaining that head pressure. And what it does is it's like a vent in your plumbing system. It's, it's drawing air right here, and, and I'm, not, uh, I'm not drawing, trying to suck air from all the way up that pipe and compete for air and water at the same time. So cutting at a T right here and putting the standpipe just above the ram pump gives it a nice free flow of air, can suck in, the line can keep going, and essentially just moving the water supply down here. So let's go down to the pump, see how it fared the winter, and see if we can't get it fired up. Okay, yeah, I can see we've got something in the line here. Not enough water is getting through to activate the check valve. Usually what happens is right here at this union, the union is a fitting that you can use in steel pipe that uh, allows you to take a section out of the middle without completely unthreading everything. It's nice for if you need to do repairs on it, but th these are always really tight because they, you know, it sits down here underwater in the winter and gets corroded. We should be able to break it loose. Watch, here's experience for you. Watch that thing come down and smack me right in the thumb. But I do it anyway, don't I? Well, I learned my lesson slow. If I can just shock this and break that union loose. All right, something's moving there. That's a good sign. Of course, not the union, though. The threads want to move. Boy, for stuff like this, the big old channel locks, it's the only, it's the go-to tool. I mean, I don't have a set of huge box-in wrenches that fits this stuff. I don't think anyone outside of a diesel mechanic does. They're hard to come by, and they're expensive. There we go. We got it. Nothing, nothing a big old hammer can't sort out. So I'll bet when we open this up, we're going to have a bunch of, bunch of pine cones and junk in there. We'll get this cleaned out. Everything's going to be really nice. And then next time, we'll, we'll install that little ram pump. Try it out. Something that you can build yourself. And I'd like to have a ram pump. And this sometimes pumps too much water. And when the springs go down and we're at the end of summer in the drought... Sometimes it out pumps my supply and if we could we I mean it pumps way more water than we could ever use So maybe uh, I'm looking forward to putting that little ram pump in there and to see if that won't be a solution I'll bet you there's a pine cone in there. There's a pine cone in there every year. Oh Yeah, it's not flowing as much as it should Oh, it's really backed up in there Usually the water pressure will blow it out. But we got we got a major obstruction going on here. Hopefully I don't have to take that valve apart. Maybe we can pulverize it to death. Yes, yeah, breaking up. It's really jammed in there. And now I've pushed it back further. Oh, there's some sticks. There we go. Oh, you can still feel it in there. But we're getting better. See that? Oh, there's another one. That head pressure. That head pressure is building up now that I put that standpipe in there and uh, giving more pressure. I think that's pretty good. Maybe, did we get it out of there? I don't see the pine cone though. That's a lot of pressure there. All right, so let's close this while we're, well, we want that pressure to build up in that pipe. Let's take a look at our, our pump and see what's going on. One thing that happens with this, this pump is that this is an air chamber here. And a ram pump, again, if, if you're new to the channel, is uh, this is an old technology. This was invented hundreds of years ago by some very clever men and it, what it does is it allows you to pump water and this particular pump here will pump inch and a quarter it'll pump uh, over a million no 
half a million, I think I figured it once, half a million gallons a year, and using no electricity with two moving parts. It's the most incredible thing ever. And, you know, when I first built this, I followed some instructions on, off of uh, online YouTube from uh, my friend um, uh, Scott. Um, what's the name of his? Oh, uh, Engineer775. Engineer, and, and I didn't understand how it worked. I just followed the instructions and I built it into my absolute amazement. It pumped. Uh, and I had to sit and look at it for about 15 minutes before it, finally I got it through my head how this was working. I think the lens has got water on it. And the thing that so I guess that what so impressed me about that, yeah, there's a bunch of bunch of junk in there, is that um, here here it is uh, handed to me on a already built. You know, here someone else did all the hard work. I simply am just following instructions, putting it together. And even then, I couldn't hardly understand how it functioned. And so you know, it makes you wonder about the mind that developed it initially. It's just, it's just so incredible to me. All right, so we got a little bit of water coming down from the hose that's supplying the water tower. But as far as I can see, I can see in there, it looks, it looks to be pretty much free of obstructions. There's some, there's some, some dirt in there, some silt. I don't want that in there. Let's uh, we'll give it a, we'll give it a little pressure wash out here. This, we'll have good pressure here now that we've got this built up and kind of just blast it out. Chance of me getting wet are very high. Yeah, now we can hook this all back up. So this right there, that's the union. And whenever you do something like this, put one of those in because it, with steel pipe, you know, you have to unthread everything. So you have to unthread the whole thing and it's not, not handy. So you put a union whenever you want to splice something in, in the middle. And that's quite a, quite a thing there. Let's see, let's tighten this up here. Oh, that's nice there. Now we can put our stamp pipe or pressure tank on. Nothing more than a piece of, what is this, three inch, four inch? four inch ABS or PVC, excuse me. I should know better than that. The mile, thousands of miles that I've laid of it. So here's the components. It's really simple. It, it, it's, it's got two moving parts. It's got two check valves, single swing check valves. Here's one here and one here. And how it works is, uh, and this is a valve, so coming down, this is called the drive pipe. This is the pipe that's coming down from the spring from the water support supply. This is inch and a quarter. Now the drive pipe typically needs to be twice the size of the supply pipe, which is the pipe coming out the other end. You can pump extreme long distances with this because you're not affected by friction loss because the volume is so low and so slow, velocity is so slow, that it, there isn't any friction and you can lift seven to one. So for every foot of fall you have in your pump, you can lift seven feet, you know, that's rule of thumb. So we have the shutoff valve here, the union, the, a T, uh, a single swing check valve, single swing check valve there. This one here is, is working this way, and this one here is working this way. And then we have another T that goes up to an air tube. You can use anything, PVC, propane tank, a 90, a pressure gauge, a valve to close down the other side to prime it. So when we're starting the pump, we'll close this valve here because we need some back pressure. And beings that there's no water in that line because it hasn't been used, then we need back pressure because once we build the back pressure, we can slowly start opening this. As it fills, then the pump will operate properly. So as the pump water comes down, let's just do it together here. As the water comes down here, we'll open this. And you'll see this is called the waste valve. Okay. Now you see how that slams shut? So it slams shut because there's no back pressure. And so there's energy in this water, right? And so as the water comes down, it's got to go somewhere. So it's looking, it's like a teenager. It searches out the, the path of least resistance. And the path of least resistance is this waste valve because it's sitting open. 
So as the water starts coming out and that energy is pushing out, it pushes that carries that valve along with it and it boom, that door shuts. It has closed off that access. The water can no longer come out of there. Well, that energy has got to go somewhere, right? So it goes down now that that door is shut and it pushes through here, opening this valve. And then it runs into the back pressure that's coming down from the line. It can't go there. So the only place the energy can go is to squeeze the air in this tube. It's just nothing but, but just ambient air in there sealed off. So it squeezes that, that energy squeezes that air. And like a balloon, you know, when you squeeze a balloon, you can push in, it pushes back on you. It really wants to, it wants to fight you and go back. So it squeezes the air, it pushes back, and that back pressure now closes this valve right here. So the energy is, it goes here, it can't go there, comes here, goes there, can't go there, closes this valve. The only place that water has to go is out the top. And so when we see it up at the top there, we'll see that it's surging. The water surges like this, and this, and this. And what that is doing, it, what, that's just showing the action of the pump. So we'll, we'll build up pressure here by priming it a couple times. And what that's doing now, doing this manually, it's building up pressure and it doesn't take much. Now it's working on its own right there. Look at that. It's working on its own. It's building pressure in the pressure gauge. Now here's the fiddly bit. We can see our pressure gauge here. We're holding right at about 24 pounds. Now we got to slowly open this drive pipe because it's empty. There's no water in. This is pushing up. This is going to uh, the water tower up the hill. But I'm going to crack this open a little bit, but I don't want my pressure to drop so far that the pump stops working. But you can see now that the pump is slowing down. And what it's doing is now it's filling that line, it's filling this drive line. And once that fills up, gets up there, you know, 10, you know, 10 feet or so up, it'll, I can open it all the way and it have enough back pressure to force be enough, there be enough resistance for it to work. But this has always been a really strong pump. I had a commercially made one that I used uh, years ago. It was an old one. It was 200 years old and I re rebuilt the flat bar on it and it wouldn't pump as high as this one does. This has been a really good, strong, durable pump that you can build yourself for about a hundred, hundred and fifty dollars. Now the pump seems to be working properly. I can open this up all the way now. See it's slowing down because there's not a lot of back pressure. It likes the back pressure and the more back pressure the faster it will run. But it's building. It's building right now. Each pump is, is increasing pressure. Okay, so here we are at the other end of the pipe. We're probably 300 feet or so above where the pump is working and probably 40 feet of elevation. And that little pump with the plumbing, basic plumbing store uh, parts will uh, pump. Uh, I, measured, I measured it last a couple of years ago and it was just under like 1.4 gallons per minute and it does that around the clock 24 hours a day pumping hundreds of thousands of gallons annually uh, for, for basically for free so and this pumps up to our water tower so uh, t tomorrow we're gonna me and Mrs. W and I we're gonna head into the town tonight and get uh, we gotta get some pipe and some fittings and we'll that little ramp pump that I showed you at the beginning that I think it's a half incher we'll hook that up I'll be interested to see will that lift as high as my inch and a quarter, my big one will. I suspect that it might. So it might be a better option. It would be a slower trickle. Uh, it'll take longer to fill the water tower, but it doesn't matter because that way we can pull off the reserves uh, and then all night it pumps and it will be ready for us in the morning. So it's a, it's a wonderful, fa it's a fabulous system. It's a, it's a micro, mi micro version of the, the big system that many of us use in municipalities, in water towers. So. I could hear it coming. I'm going to have a wet ear here in a minute. Three. Oh, I got three, two, one. There it is. How about that, huh? 
They, that may not seem like a big deal to you uh, if you haven't ever been around or, or know what it takes to lift water and to pump water out of the ground and to move it larger distances. Uh, go spend a time in a remote village in Africa where they have to carry everything a five-gallon bucket at a time and something like this. Well, what do you think that would be worth?